Alright guys, welcome back to Wild Outdoor Living. This is my race report from the 2019 Angry Horse 82 mile gravel race. Um, yeah. <laughs> so from the title, you guys are probably wondering, what do you mean by 82 mile gravel race with no training? Well, um, basically, the month of May I rode, I think, 106 miles in the entire month of May, and that was my biggest month for 2019 in terms of miles and time. And yesterday I rode 82 miles over a course of about 7 hours and 15 minutes, um, which is about the entire month of May for me. So, yeah, really didn't prepare <laughs> uh, whatsoever. Um, all of my rides have basically been shorter mountain bike rides, definitely more focused on the technical side. Definitely a bit of climbing in those rides, so that probably saved me, but um, yeah, no endurance rides basically since last September. And I originally wasn't going to do the race, uh, knew I wasn't prepared for it, wasn't really feeling it to be honest, um, but my friends were doing it, and I thought I'll just take it easy. 82 miles really isn't too far. I've done plenty of longer rides. And so I signed up on Wednesday. I took this bike for a ride that same day, <laughs> which I honestly haven't ridden in months. Haven't really ridden it much since last September um, because of the mountain biking. And so I've only done maybe my longest ride this year was 20 ish miles. So yeah, this was a bit of an experiment. <laughs> All right, good morning. It is like 4.05 in the morning. Um, I'm dressed, everything is ready. I think I need to put on some sunscreen and then pretty much wait for uh, Joe and Austin to get here so that we can uh, head out to the aid station, get it set up and then get to the start line um, in time to have enough time to get ready before the start. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it's a pretty early start for me, <laughs> um, but that's just how these races go <laughs> usually. You stoked? It's gonna be a cold one. <laughs> it is cold. <laughs> People are just showing up. What is it? Right. Hour to the start? Everything is ready. <laughs> Hopefully I'm ready. Probably not. Pretty cold in the morning. Roads were amazing, and I mean amazing. So, I would say some of the best gravel roads I've ridden in a long time. Smooth. They were buffed out. It rained the night before, so it brought the dust down. Uh, it, just, it just was like it was primo dirt. Um, until there was a little bit too much water, <laughs> and we ended up getting into these big fields of mud. And I've actually never raced, I've ridden in mud plenty of times, but I've actually never raced my gravel bike in mud. I know it's kind of a tradition in other parts of the country, but for me it's not a common thing. Um, so as we came into these mud pits, I was a little bit worried about what was going to happen. Um, but my tires and the bike performed really, really well. Uh, I kept the front derailleur and the big chain ring as much as I could, uh, just to keep that derailleur as tight as possible. Um, and that, that seemed to work out, didn't drop any chains, didn't have any um, issues with the rear derailleur. Um, but it was definitely sticky, peanut buttery mud. Um, had it been any sticker, stickier, we probably would have gotten stuck, to be honest. Back tire was spinning, I had clumps of mud in my hair, in my hair <laughs> at the end. But somehow we managed to just roll through there super fast. Uh, I was feeling pretty good. I knew, I was riding with my friends and I knew I was probably going a little bit too fast for my fitness level, um, but we were carrying so much momentum and I just didn't really want to slow down. And so 
Yeah, uh, all was pretty well until mile 43. And keep in mind, this is an 82-mile race. Um, mile 43, I started to get leg cramps down the insides of my thighs. Um, I wasn't necessarily tired. I'm not bonking, but all of a sudden my legs are just locking up. It's, it's obviously a big symptom of not doing any training. Ooh, past halfway in miles, but about halfway in bird. <laughs> We've had pretty primo roads, um, except for actually a ton of mud, a couple sections, but otherwise pretty good. Um, I had some ups and some downs, but pretty much every mile was a struggle. Um, and I just had to kind of like ease my way through the race. <laughs> I really was not able to ride as hard as I wanted to or felt like I could at many times, um, but I was able to actually stay on the bike. <sighs> Made it to the paved road. Mile 73.4. My legs started cramping at mile 43, so. <sighs> Ride your bike more. <laughs> um, so I just dialed it back, doing us on our way up there. And I'm just trying to tap out the miles. Um, there's still at least one steep, annoying climb to come, but it is on pavement. And then like a quarter mile of gravel at the end, and then we'll be there. But uh, I'm hurting pretty bad. <laughs> but this course is just so beautiful. Uh, I've just been blown away. Um, the mud for the first, you know, from mile 10 to mile 40 was uh, pretty gnarly, um, but I was able to stay on the bike. And then the big climbs at the end of the race, and it's not a great time for me, <laughs> big climbs. But uh, lots of fun. It's a deceptively hard course. Uh, super, super beautiful. Uh, amazing terrain. It's a true gravel race course. It's not some of those that have like way too much pavement um, or they're like overly technical, so you might want to bring a mountain bike. This is like a, just a straight up gravel race. Uh, and I really like it for that. No monster climbs, but there are just, I don't know how many climbs. Just tons and tons of climbs. The course is never flat. There's a few big ones in there. And yeah, it it's, it's deceptively hard and I did finish um, but I was so weak and I just the only thing I could really do uh, was get my bike on the rack get my shoes on uh, get some food like there was no room for filming <laughs> uh, at least from from an energy perspective I just I just couldn't do it I couldn't pull that GoPro out and, and talk anymore um, but I did get to the finish line and as I was approaching the finish line I noticed some big storm clouds rolling in so I was pretty motivated to get there, um, and I would say 10, 15 minutes after I finished, skies opened up, super hard hailstorm, reminded me of Crusher from last year actually, and I was really glad <laughs> to be in the car at that point. Um, but I, I have to say I had a ton of fun, I was amazed by the course, I'm glad I did it, uh, I just wish I had done at least a little bit more riding beforehand. <laughs> As you can hear from my voice and uh, and probably see in my in my posture, I am I am hurting all over right now. <laughs> so yeah, so in terms of stuff that worked and didn't work, um, there wasn't really much I would change. Honestly, the, the equipment was great. Yeah, everything worked flawless except for <laughs> for my body. <laughs> so I definitely recommend this event. You know, Dirty Kansas the same day. And it's getting to be a pretty big race, and a lot of people, uh, for a lot of you guys, that's not going to appeal to you. Angry Horse definitely has way less crowds. There's probably other races, you know, to you locally, wherever you are, uh, the same day that, you know, might be a better option. I've I've been tempted to do Dirty Kanza, but it's hard when you've got Angry Horse locally and Dirty Kanza halfway across the country. Yeah, I prefer this one for sure. Um, love the variety of the terrain. Love love the scenery. Um, 
and the, the the vibe is just awesome so yeah so that's it for angry horse 2019 uh yeah we'll catch you later